Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today we are gonna talk about Web of Venom Funeral Pyre. Uh, this was a one shot that came out about a couple weeks ago, maybe like two or three weeks ago now. Uh, it's written by Colin Bunn and it has artwork on some of the pages, at least the beginning, by Joshua Cassara, who I really liked. He did one of those fill in issues for the main Venom book and I liked his stuff. And then Alberto Albuquerque, who was also a phenomenal artist. So the art team on this and the writing team, you know, Colin Bunn, like I'm 50 50 on him, but with his Venom stuff, you know, I like some of his Venom stuff. Even the stuff that is just supposed to be like kind of just goofy fun, I kind of embrace it and, and get into it. Uh, this issue, though, brings back actual, uh, like a co-creation of his, I think, Rick Remender, and maybe I, Colin Bunn was part of it, you guys maybe can correct me on this, uh, but there's a character named Andy that was part of the Flash Thompson run, and forgive me for not knowing that right easily off the top of my head, because obviously we haven't got to the Flash Thompson stuff yet on this show, we're going to get into that in season four, um, you know, after Christmas and stuff of this year, uh, so 2020 will be mostly focusing on the Flash Thompson run, uh, where he's, you know, it's his run, his book on Venom, which was like 40-something issues, and and then I have like Secret Avengers, where he was a member of Secret Avengers, Thunderbolts, I have some trade paperbacks of that, and Guardians of the Galaxy, and then Space Venom. So we're going to get through all of that. So next season is pretty much dedicated to Flash Thompson and his run as Venom. Uh, so we'll get into the Andy stuff, but I didn't read a lot of that stuff when it first came out. I read the first maybe two trades worth of the Rick Remender stuff. And then after the crossover with uh, X-23 and, and Alejandro Ghost Rider and uh, Red Hulk, like after that crossover ended, I kind of fell away from the book for a while. So uh, a lot of that stuff is not fresh in my mind. I maybe read an issue here or there, uh, but uh, I don't know it. Like I can't quote it like the Bible the way I can some of this other Venom stuff. So I'm excited. That's what makes me so excited about doing season four is that a lot of it will be new territory for me. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to dive, you know, dive into that. So this one, you know, so, but I do know who Andy is on the surface level and I've seen her pop up in like the Venom, uh, uh, ink run or whatever the that storyline that they did with Dan Slott and uh, Mike Costa and uh, I like her stuff I like her the cut of her jig uh, she has like this uh, hellfire symbol on her chest now so she was uh, Mania that was the character she was originally she was uh, like Flash Thompson's sidekick in a way she was a student of his uh, and he was a teacher at her school and then she found out that he was Venom. And then what happened is that little clone of Venom that we talked about in the Daniel Way run a while back, the one that fought Wolverine, and it like possessed uh, Patricia, uh, Patricia, I can't remember her last name uh, right now. But uh, anyway, uh, Robertson, Patricia Robertson. Uh, so it like possessed her and she was like on the run, you know, and she shaved her head. And she and then at the end of the book, it was like two Venoms fighting each other. And then the one main Venom, he absorbed the clone into it. So I guess that clone still lived, uh, you know, by itself inside the main symbiote suit all these years it still resided in there somehow and so that piece of you know that clone itself separated itself from flash thompson venom and it bonded with andy and it turned her into a character named mania so i'm very excited to like i said dive more into that because that's pretty much all i really know about the character but then after the mania suit got taken away from her or went away or you know got reabsorbed or whatever again i don't remember fully what happened because i didn't read the book yet um but she went off on her own and then she got like this hellfire power so that's where we are now andy's trying to like live a normal life and uh, you know she's uh, she's got friends or or kind of friends even though that they think she's kind of weird and she keeps flaking out on them because of these nightmares that start popping up in her head like the book opens up uh and like i said joshua kassar's artwork is phenomenal and she has this crazy uh dream of like mania chewing on her and, and and tearing pieces of her off and saying you know you thought you got rid of me but there's still a piece of me inside of you obviously referring to the codex um and so that's what carnage is hunting down he's looking for all these people that have the codex or at least ever bonded with a symbiote on some level and they still have a piece of that symbiote in them and carnage is going around ripping their spines out uh sucking out that you know that piece of the codex uh that piece of that symbiote like i guess draining it from their marrow or something i don't really know so anyway so that's the story so andy's you know dealing with that she wakes up she She's like staying with an aunt or someone. Yeah, I think it's her aunt. And uh, her aunt's like making her breakfast. And, you know, and Andy's, you know, there's like this nice banter between the two of them, setting up their relationship, setting up like what's been going on in Andy's world. And as she's going around, you know, she's kind of narrating, talking in her head about the life she used to have, how she met Flash Thompson, how she found out he was Venom. So this is a nice like precursor. And this again, this informed me on a lot of stuff about her. Cause again, I knew like surface level stuff of her, but I didn't really know that much detail. So this book was nice. Colin Bunn did a great job kind of reintroducing you to Andy and for someone like me who just surface level knows her this was a nice like uh, read because I was like oh good now I feel like by the time we get to the drama in this book I kind of know who she is as a character and why she makes some of the, the decisions that she makes and I realize that she is heroic that she there's a hero inside Andy 
And so she's hanging out with her friends, but she keeps having these like weird spasms and nightmares that they're, everyone that she loves is getting killed by the mania symbiote. And she's like, you know, believing that she's like throwing pieces of it up and she's freaking out and then everyone's like are you okay like andy is everything all right and she's like yeah no no it's cool i'm just you know just having a spaz moment or whatever but she can tell even though that her friends laughed at her dumb joke that they can tell something's wrong with her and they're a little freaked out by her and so she's like you know all right i'm gonna go to work she goes there we talked about this once i, I think uh, there was a news article that said like this is the first victim from the absolute carnage storyline uh which is like well that's not true because especially not true now when we read that we were like well no technically other people people died by carnage's hand and cult of carnage uh you know he killed like a whole town full of people and it's him making his way from like you know the the west coast i guess all the way through middle america and then now you know heading into philadelphia where andy is uh and then working his way to new york where we know he's going to end up for absolute carnage and where he ended up in the free comic book day issue uh so again this is taking place right before that and this is like I'm guessing what leads him to go to New York from here uh, because Andy kind of, you know, to jump to the end here, uh, Andy does get away. And I will say before we get into any more of this, I forgot that I should mention there's a digital code to this book. So I'll put that boom right there on the screen. If you haven't read this book yet, definitely pick it up. There's the code. First person put that code in, gets the comic for free. Just go to that website, put the code in and it's a one-time code. So once it's used, no one else can use it. So please go get it now. And if you get the book, read it. And let me know what you think in the comments below with your review. So, uh, yeah, so Andy does, you know, um, kind of slip out of Carnage's hands here. So that on that level, you kind of wonder, well, what's the point of this story? You know, like if, if, if there's no real death count here, because everyone dying in the first half of this book is all in Andy's head. Uh, no one's really dying until she gets home and finds her aunt. And her aunt in this really awesome grotesque scene uh, drawn by Al uh, Alberto Albuquerque. The art is amazing here. Carnage rips the ant in half. He's like in a shell that looks like the ant, I guess, and splits her in half and crawls out of her. This is really cool horror, like B horror movie stuff here. And I thought it was handled really well. This nice close up with the lighting on her. It just screamed B horror movie. And I thought it was executed wonderfully. Uh, and then this big reveal of carnage here uh with the spiral on his head so he's in Noel's possession so he does look very carnage-ish i know a lot of us were worried because he looked you know he looked towered over everybody he had some black mixed in with his red which that's always kind of been a case but it was more pronounced in some of the drawings by uh by uh you know uh, ryan stegman and some of the other artists and so people were worried and then i think even they did their podcast like ryan stegman and, and uh you know and donny cates did their podcast and they mentioned something about carnage being a corpse and everyone was freaking out about that because they misspoke you know what donny cates meant to say was that it is cletus cassidy he he is alive the the suit and the no the power of null reanimated him and i'm guessing that's why he put in sin during that one issue uh, because it was showing that Null has the power to bring back the dead which again just makes me feel like he's just copying uh, you know the, the Blackest Night storyline that Jeff Johns did if you look at how this book has been paced so far it just kind of feels like a, a direct copy of that like this absolute carnage almost feels like it's going to be his version of Sinestro Corps where he's got you know like if, if Sinestro is uh, you know Green Lantern's opposite Carnage is Venom's opposite and so it's like alright and there's a connection to them like uh, you know Green Lantern and uh, Sinestro are friends and basically Venom and Carnage are father and son. So there's like that history there of like, you know, closeness. Uh, and then there's fear, you know, like fear being the theme. And it's like, you know, they're doing a horror movie basically. So I'm like, yeah, this comes across very like Sinestro Core War. And I'm sure this isn't going to end, you know, have an ending. It's It might have like a, a little bow at the end of some of this, but it's ultimately going to lead to another big event that Donnie Cates and Ryan Stegman are probably going to do next year when the sequel comes out uh, for the Venom movie. And uh, they'll, they'll try to time it around that most likely to get, you know, get maximum Venom hype and uh, and they'll do the Null story then and that'll come across very Blackest Night-ish because I'm sure Null's going to bring back like Ann Wang and a bunch of other characters to like terrorize Eddie Brock and stuff uh, so I don't know we'll see maybe I'm wrong and maybe characters that die in Absolute Carnage will come back in the storyline next year or whatever maybe I'm wrong we'll see uh, but since Sydney already came back and Cletus Cassidy's already been brought back um, as agents of Null I'm going to guess you know we're going to get more of that coming up so either way though that's a little side rant but this book I thought had great artwork and and Andy's getting attacked by Carnage, and he really takes the fight to her. Um, he kills her aunt, obviously. She runs outside. He wounds her. She's got 
you know, bleeding from the arm. And then she runs outside and runs into a neighbor. And he's like, hey, is everything okay? I heard, you know, screaming. And uh, then Carnage shows up and kills, uh, you know, the neighbor and the neighbor's dog. <laughs> Which is funny because it was like, I, do, I think Cletus Cassidy killed a dog once. Or when he was a kid, he killed uh, his aunt's dog. So it was like, I guess, a little nod to that. So I like Colin Bunn's writing in that regard. He really taps in to these little, like, nods and fun things at continuity, which I like. Because that shows that he's acknowledging continuity even if it's a small thing like carnage killing a dog when he was a kid um to now when he's doing it again uh with this neighbor um even if it's something small like that he still squeezes those in uh which i like and i appreciate as a long-term fan and as somebody who does this show who has a lot of these stories now fresh in my mind and hopefully fresh in your guys minds uh so andy anyway now is cornered and she summons the powers of the hellfire and she decides to fight back against carnage and she's like yeah you thought you were, i was going to be easy prey but i'm not and so uh she full-on brings uh, the hurt to him and she's like you know you killed my aunt and now i want to destroy you so she shoots hellfire all over him but for some reason the hellfire actually doesn't hurt carnage so that's one thing we learned so uh, back to that question of why does this story exist if it was just it's supposed to be carnage killing all the people that have symbiotes in them but andy gets away so why let andy get away and to me i feel like that's very scary movie-esque i feel like that's colin bunn trying to you know channel in like movies like you know scream or, or friday the 13th or anything like that um or nightmare on elm street where like the, you know the soul girl survivor gets away at the end uh and which just leads to the precursor to the next story that's kind of how I feel like what he was channeling here. Plus, I'm sure he doesn't want to kill Andy. That's kind of his character. But I hope if Andy ever does die, I hope it is by Colin Bunn's hand. Because I feel like a lot of times, if you're able to, if the creator of the book is still around or creator of the character is still around, they should be the one to tell the last story of that character. So uh, I, so for a moment, I was afraid that Andy was going to die in this because I was like, wow, they got Colin Bunn back to do this. Uh, is this the end of Andy? But I'm happy to report that she's still going to be in part of the fight coming up. And I guess she's going to be the one to go and ring the bell like Paul Revere. And she's going to be like, hey, uh, you know, uh, the Eddie, you know, this, this symbiote is coming. Carnage is coming. Even though... I, I also feel like that's a little pointless because Eddie already knows Carnage is coming. He learned that in the last issue, issue 16 of Venom. So by the time Andy shows up, he's going to be like, hey, you know, I, Carnage is coming. And Eddie's going to be like, yeah, I know. And then it's going to be like, oh, okay. Well, I guess I'll help you fight him. <laughs> I feel like that's how that interaction is going to go. So um, uh, anyway, so yeah, Carnage brings on the pain. They fight, they fight, and uh, Andy gets away. But she, by getting away, she almost dies. She full on almost dies. Carnage is ripping apart all of the monsters that she summons from hell. He's killing them left and right. It's a pretty spectacular battle. So the only way Andy survives is actually she teleports herself away. Uh, just randomly she's like let me just teleport and she does and somehow teleports herself above earth's atmosphere and then uh ends up crash landing or re-teleporting back down safely to new york city and then she says hey wait eddie brock is here the you know the other venom um i gotta go find him and warn him that carnage is coming and once again those visions are in her head of you know the symbiote attacking her uh but she's like you know i gotta ignore it you know whatever uh carnage will be here and i gotta go find eddie brock and i don't have a lot of time to do it and then at the end carnage is like you know you thought you could get away standing in the body of all the monsters and he's like you thought you can get away but you really just went to where i'm gonna go anyway so i'll just get you next time andy and i don't know how he knew uh instinctively that she ended up in new york maybe that's a thing with noel and like how he can sense the symbiotes and stuff maybe that's what it is but either way He's stuck in Philadelphia and he's like, all right, I got to get to New York now. And I'm going to guess the very next appearance of him after this is actually that free comic book day issue. So if you're looking on how to line these up continuity wise, I'm going to assume that's where it takes place is right before free comic day. So then after this, what Carnage does is he goes and disguises himself as Eddie Brock, uh, you know, goes to try to break into Avengers Tower, gets arrested, brought to Rikers and then kills Lee Price there uh, and frames Eddie Brock for it. So I'm going to guess that's how this you know, plays out. Uh, but let me know what you think. If you read this book, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. If you haven't, uh, what did you think of my review of it? Like, you know, do you have any, or not really a review, I guess I don't really do reviews. I always say I do discussions on here, uh, because you know, reviews, it's like, I, I'm not here to give it a grading. I'm just here to talk about what I liked and didn't like, and then share that with you and then get your feedback. So that way we can discuss it in our comment section. So if you have strong feelings about this issue, if you're a big Andy fan, I'd love to hear what you think of this down below. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, I have more episodes coming up. The next episode we're going to talk about is the Venom Annual that came out, Acts of Evil, uh, written by a friend of mine named Ryan Cady. Uh, so I'm very excited to check this out. And Simone uh, DeMio's artwork uh, looks phenomenal. So we're going to dive into that in the next issue, uh, our next episode. And then we're also going to do a, a precursor to Absolute Carnage by going over all the True Believer $1 books. So I'm going to be recording that later today. And I'll try to get these videos up to you all as soon as possible. Hopefully all in time before Absolute Carnage comes out. Uh, number 
one next Wednesday, August 6th. I'm very, or August 7th? Maybe it's August 7th. Uh, so I'm very excited for that. And we will, you know, definitely review that book when it comes out. So thank you so much again for watching the show. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.